G'day there guys, Diesel from Get Around Isles, Camper Trailer Traveling. Thanks for joining us today. Coming up to today's video, something a little bit different. Now we get asked different questions at different times about accessories and what should I pack and what should I not pack and those types of things. But what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take you through all these bits and pieces here and all this is stuff that's all loaded in the camper trailer, basically lives there, stays there all the time. Now for those of you who don't know and have joined the channel recently, we have been around Australia and we've camped in all different types of conditions, different types of weather and those types of things and uh, over the period we sort of managed to narrow it down to this, uh, all this stuff here and there's a lot of things we packed in the early days and we found we don't use and all those types of things and of course weight uh, is definitely a consideration but for us this is everything, I'm going to go through it with you and hope you'll be out. So hopefully in today's video we'll cover off with you what accessories do I really need for my camper trailer. But before we do that, grab yourself a drink, grab yourself a seat, let's get into it, cheers. I haven't sort of really planned this one at all. I'm just going to wing it. I'm basically going to just going to work through here and and go through the side here and like I sort of put everything sort of together and I'll just explain what we got and I'll explain uh, why we pack it. But I'll start off with the jerry cans here. So these are the two 20 litre jerry cans. You can pick these up anywhere from uh, any sort of auto parts store. I think we got these from super cheap. Now these ones here for us fit in the front of the camper trailer. It's not something you would need if you're, you're going to tra travel, you know, maybe only a few hours. But if you're traveling longer distances, we definitely take these. They're definitely full. Yes, they. it's going to add a bit of weight to your load, but you just got to have them. You don't know what's going to happen on the road. Um, sometimes you don't know how far a petrol station is. You know, you can look it up a map and do your research, but sometimes you get somewhere and it's not open. Don't worry, we've been in that position before where... There's supposed to be a, a survey here and here and here and you try and map it out, you know, when you're sort of going three, four, five hundred k's between servos. Sometimes they're closed depending on the time of the day or sometimes things happen and these ones here will definitely get you out of trouble. So, rightio, so next up, I won't go through the cutlery stuff because, you know, all that sort of stuff is, you know, it's really up to you how much you want to take. For us, we've got the, the kitchen here that sort of slides out. But in regards to pots and pans, that's it. That's all we took around Australia with us. Just the one saucepan and um, this one here, which, you know, obviously does steaming and does all the veggies and that sort of stuff. So literally that's all that we took in regards to plates and bowls. Plastic stuff is the way to go. Uh, I wouldn't take glass anywhere. Any sort of corrugations and you're going to do yourself a mischief. But for us, these bowls here, it's all plastic and cups, you know, something with a lid on it is always handy. Um, especially with kids, they're always buddy knocking stuff over. Now this one here isn't something that would be applicable for all people, but those of you who have been following us, we know with our cooktop, it doesn't have the wind protection around it. Now this one here I picked up from, uh, I think it was BC BCF, I think Anaconda sell, sell them as well. But that one there has been pretty useful as a windbreak. Uh, for us, so that one's definitely got us out of trouble uh, quite a few times. So if you've got a cooktop uh, with no wind protection and you don't want to use bits and pieces to sort of stack it up, um, look up this one as you go as well. Rightio, so next up here is charging stuff. Okay, so we've got the 220 amp hour AGM batteries in ours, but we take this uh, solar panel with us on the road everywhere. It hasn't let us down other than the fact that uh, might have been overcast conditions. And unfortunately, these hard panels, any sort of overcast stuff, basically the, the charging in these is pretty average. We did try to blanket, um, which we have for a little while. We had some problems with it. Unfortunately, we also had some problems with the company we we're dealing with and um, just ghosting and, you know, not wanting to help us out. But that's gone back now and we're, um, we've got another one on the way. But having a solar panel, um, look, even if you, you got lithium, you know, you still want to have one of these in your, your back pocket. 
Um, you just don't know what's going to happen. And um, Personally, I wouldn't travel around without a solar blanket, that's for sure, or a panel on this one. Again, it's only 160 watts, so not super powerful, but combine this one with the one we got on the trailer, which is 120 watts. Um, that's plenty, but the 160 watt here uh, has done a great job for us. This one here, oops, so this one here we got from BCF. Now this is a 15 amp um, extension cable. Now caravan parks all around Australia run off 15 amp, not off your, your traditional um, extension lead that you have in the house, which is obviously to 12 amps or 13 amps. Difference with this one is it's got the bigger um, bit here. Now there wasn't, now we normally take an extension lead with us anyway to, to run power from the camper trailer to the air fryer or whatever sort of electronics we put outside. But this one stays in the camper trailer. This one is about well, 20 meters I think. Sometimes you're not always right next to the power pole or where you're staying so um, don't ever think that you won't need the extra length uh, in cables or those types of things. There's a good chance at some point you will need it for sure. So that one there has done the job for us. This one here is an Anderson plug. Again, it's uh, 20 meters long with a solar panel. Sometimes, you know, you want shade, you need shade because it's hot and those types of things. But you don't want, you know, you need for solar to dictate where you want to park and the comfort of where you're staying. So, so yeah, this uh, Anderson cable here, I got off eBay, I don't know, it was 25 or 30 bucks. Um, and it's good quality as well. So this one here, we can run it um, right out into a clearing somewhere, have the panel hooked up and, and uh, know, you know, that our batteries are going to be charged up and they're going to be good. Now, um, we carry rubbish bags everywhere we go. And of course, whenever you're staying off grid, you don't want to leave your bloody rubbish lying around. So this one here is a, a rubbish bag that goes on the back wheel of the camper trailer. Cheap's Kings one. Um, this one isn't great. It doesn't stay on there well, but of course it's all waterproof and basically swimming in those types of things, wet clothes, all go in here. And of course, rubbish bags will fit a, a few in there. And, um, you know, obviously you just chuck them in a bin on your way out or um, find a bin to, you know, wherever you stay next. So, um, travel bag, you definitely need one of those, that's for sure. Now this one's been an addition for us, probably over the, been about the last, or sort of eight months now. You'll start seeing, start seeing some videos come out going forward with us doing more campfires. So in the past we've used the Kings portable power, uh, sorry, the portable fire pit, which was okay, it was cheap. But unfortunately there's a lot of places to stay they want you to have fires off the ground. And this one here does that, uh, uh, I don't know, I think it's about 150 bucks. Um, but I'll chuck the links for some of these products in the description as well. Rightio, so this one here is our mat that we use. Um, we use it quite a fair bit, and this one here we've had for, well, pretty much when we got this camper trailer, which is about three years this month, I think, or next month. This one here is a KMEC one. We got this from BCF. They do uh, quite a few different sizes, so depending on, um, the length of your camper trailer or the type of area you want to cover. Um, measure it out and obviously um, do your homework before you go in and buy one. But for us this Comic one um, has been great. In regards to off-roading stuff, so on the Bajero we have the Max Tracks. We do have four, but they go on the roof there. I do have the shovel on the Bajero as well, but this one here is obviously just the little portable fold out one just in case of just in case the hand on that one breaks but this one's you know steel so is actually quite strong and obviously if I want an extra set of hands there's a second one there snatch strap which we've um, obviously never had to use air compressor so for us in regards to air compressor unless you're going on um, blacktop all the time you definitely need one of these uh, for any sort of off-roading 
you just need to have the options, you know, to let your tyres down for comfort or to get to where you want to go. Um, or I'll tell you, if you have any bloody legs in the road, these ones will get you out of trouble. This one here is just a King's double thumper. Again, I think we got this when we first got the Pajero, which is probably four years ago. It's done us great. Um, if you've got a trailer, you definitely need to get yourself an extension uh, hose. This one came separate, so that's also just the gauge there. Um, I think it's about a 15 meter on cable again. I know it's all money, but you need to bloody have them. And of course, we've got the tie deflator there as well. So again, these are just all the cheap Kings ones. And now for us, the dunny we take on the road with us, unless you're lucky enough to, you know, have a van or something with a toilet in it, you need to have a, a portable dunny with you. There's a lot of places in the country that require you to take a portable toilet with you. Now this one here is a porta potty 365, so I think it's the, the biggest one. Have done a video on this one. Um, the chemicals we use are just the, the Thetford brand of ones, which you know you get from, well, we got ours from Anaconda, but they're pretty easy to find. And that one there has done the trick for us. Yes, it's got a bit of red from, um, you know, from Northern WA, but that's been great for us. So I did forget to mention, and it actually um, has come up a few times, people ask us, where do we store this? For us, it literally goes right inside the door there. So if we need to pull over somewhere and the keys need to go quick, just open the camper trailer door, pull it out on the side of the road and off you go. Um, and of course, it's kind of the, the last thing in and the first thing out in regards to setting up or packing up. Um, please jump on the comments at the end of this video and uh, let me know if you have any questions. I'll, um, I'll definitely do my best to answer it for you. But we're on Instagram and Facebook, if the socials suit you better, so you want to send us a message and maybe have a bit of a chat, um, jump on those ones and you know we'll cover off in a bit more detail if I've missed something. Now for mozzie repellent. We did have quite a few problems with midges up in Queensland. Not so much the territory, but because we spent the, well, when we were in the territory, it was dry season, so midges weren't so much of a problem. But unfortunately, when we were in Queensland, we are on the, the tail end of the wet season, and um, we definitely got taken advantage of, that's for sure. And we were, at the time, only using um, like coils and incense and those types of things. And for us, all that stuff was useless, so I can give you my experience on these for mozzies, but I can't tell you if they um, actually work for midges. Now, we've got two, so so firstly, with this one here, and I'll chuck these on the screen as well, and I'll chuck the links uh, in the description as well, which is going to be a bit of work, but I'll do that for you. We bought this one first off a, recommend, off a recommendation of a friend when we were in, uh, in Wickham, which is near Caratha, up the north of WA. These, this thing is bloody gold. This has never let us down. We've never had any problems with mozzies. Uh, whenever we've used this one. Now for this one here, you get the packs with it. Um, I'm probably going to do a video going in a, into these in a bit more detail and the pros and cons of the both. Um, so this video isn't so long, but basically you get these little things here, it comes with a gas, and it comes with the pads. The pads go on there, and you light it up and basically just put it by your feet and it does a bloody fantastic job, so that's been great. However, we were told by someone else that there is another one that's more efficient. So with that one there, it takes little gas refills. But this one here, again, I'll chuck them on the screen, you just run these little butane bottles which you, you buy separately. Now this one here, we've used oh maybe six months. So normally you'd run it over night time, which is probably you know two, three, four hours after dinner, or as long as you're up drinking really. And um, still feels like it's got heaps in it. So longer term usage, this one here is definitely more efficient to run and. In cheaper and long term, you know, these aren't a lot to buy. 
yeah, it still sounds like there's heaps in there. So um, they both work equally as well, but this one just costs a bit more. And again, you just buy the pads separately. There's a bag there, and um, we've got these. Well, we carry one in the the car when we're doing swag camping, and the other one stays in the camper trailer. Um, so it's nothing we forget, but thermocells, highly recommend them, they'll be bloody fantastic for us. Rightio, so next up is pegs and tie downs and those types of things. So we've actually had uh, quite a bit of experience in regards to pegs and different type scenarios and different types of weather and we've tried a few, but if there's one bit of advice I'll give you, take different types of pegs because where you go will depend on what type of peg you need you know it might be hard ground it might be soft ground it might be muddy it might be sandy and it's definitely not a case of one peg you know um, suits everything so for us now the first type of peg we got here is the uh, Oz Trail Screw in tents I'm not sure I got these from Anaconda or Tent well I think every state sort of you know has a different type of camping shop that you know does all this sort of stuff really well but the screwing pegs with a, with a drill here have been fantastic and save a lot of time. So we've got the different drill um, bits we need, different hose fittings. Now I'll cover off the hose fittings when I get to the hose and I'll tell you why. You need to have um, plenty of options to choose from. Now the mallet always goes with us. And I'll tell you why in a sec. This one here is just the old Ryby um, cordless reel, which, is, which has been great. Again, the attachment either stays on there or goes back in there. Now this one, we didn't have with us when we went around Australia. I wish I bloody did, but at the end of the day, when you've got so much money, you can only afford different things. But unfortunately with the, you know, the channel being monetized, um, you know, we're actually better pay for that one with uh, with the earnings from the channel, so um, thank you to those who watch the ads because that means I can buy some of these things and make it, um, life a lot easier. In this one here, so this is the um, the bag that's supplied by MDC, cable ties, nice big sand pegs, um, rope. I guess that's more an in case of situation. That's actually marine quality. So that one there, different screwing pegs here. Um, we've got the old um, big metal pegs there as well. And we've got a, um, literally this is full of different types of guy ropes. And uh, more cable ties there. But I guarantee you, if you don't tape a options um, with regards to pegs, you'll come unstuck somewhere and you know if there's one thing you can't control when you're out and about is the is the weather, the wind, the rain. That's one thing you don't want to run in a strife with is um, not being able to bang down the hatches so to speak. Straps wise, a couple of Aki straps, we don't use these so much anymore. Um, we used those initially to tie things on the boat rack and the camper trailer but um, like the, the ladder and those types of things, but again, we, we don't use the ladder much anymore. We sort of worked out how to set up the NX around that, so don't need those. Straps wise, we definitely use these every trip, so we use these to strap down the bikes and on the roof of the camper. We also use the ratchet straps on the top of the Bajero um, for the, the travel bag, which has all the NX stuff um, for the camper trailer. So that's something I won't cover off today because I'm just going to cover off camper trailer stuff but the roof of the Bajero is where the annex stuff goes um, that doesn't go in here because we need room for this sort of stuff now this one here is for the shower this mat here um, I got from Clark Rubber I got these from Clark Rubber as well now this wasn't cheap but I'll tell you what it's it's nice on your feet when you're having a shower um, it's nothing worse than having a shower and you know, um, having crap under your feet with dirt mud or sticks or rocks or whatever. This one here makes it real nice. But under that, we actually have these ones here. These are 
these are really cheap. I think it costs five bucks for a packet of these and basically they go on a nice little square um, around the shower area because ours has a shower on it and then that one goes over the top out there which actually sort of keeps it just off the ground a bit so um, so you're not standing in your own bloody water and soap and stuff. Rightio, so the hose, try and get the longest hose you can that you can fit. We've, uh, we have come in stock in a, a place where I actually forgot to pack this one. I actually packed the, a shorter hose because I was trying to make room for some other things and filling up the water tanks. We're basically staying a, was it down in Barcelona for a week. And um, we don't use our water tanks on this one for drinking. We just use them for showers when we're off grid or for washing dishes in the sink and that sort of stuff. But most parks will have um, you know, taps and those types of things there and they obviously won't mind you using the water to fill up your tanks. But whatever you do, obviously you've seen there, I had um, different fittings. Every park will have a different type of tap and a different type of fitting. So unless you want to be like us where we have been just sort of running out to a hardware store to, to find, you know, a tap fitting to fill up your tanks. Um, before you go somewhere, five, ten bucks, whatever it is, spend the money and make sure you get yourself sorted. For us, um, that one there just goes straight in the water tank and um, that works for us. I'm not sure how long it is, but it would be probably 20 meters um, at least. So yeah, get the biggest you can, that's for sure. Now this bag here, it's a bit of a miscellaneous. Um, got the bike tire tube. Now, if you've got kids and you're wondering if you should, if you should take bikes with you, um, now I know I've been asked quite a few times, I'd say if you're going to caravan parks or holiday parks, I'd say definitely yes every time because um, kids and bikes, you know, that's how they socialise and that's how they get around and hang out and the kid that doesn't have the bike is always the one that finds it a bit harder. Um, you know, there's times are changing and we're seeing places with bloody um, electric scooters and those types of things but um, do your kid a favour make sure it's got a bike and backup tubes will come in handy as well in case you're staying somewhere and it's a public holiday and you um, you got a puncture. Um, this one here is just backup straps, straps and those types of things. This one actually came with the camper trailer. This one here is actually backup uh, wheel bearings. Now these ones came with a camper trailer. Now I don't have grease and I wouldn't be able to fill it, uh, sorry, change it over myself on the side of the road, but you don't know where you're gonna be, or sorry, you don't know when you're gonna, get this, when you're gonna uh, come across a problem. And there's no guarantee wherever you are they're gonna have the, the bearings or the bits and pieces that you need. So um, I would recommend finding out what type of bearings your camper trailer or your caravan takes and having some with you. Um, Cause it just means otherwise you, you're gonna be stuck in a town in the middle of bloody nowhere for as long as it's gonna take to get somewhere out there. So um, yeah, wheel bearings, I definitely recommend having some of those with you. Wheel chocks. Now these ones are Wanderer ones, I got these from BCF. There's quite a, diff a few different options you can get, but depending on where you are, if you want to, you know, if you're on a hill or something like that, or you need a bit of leveling, um, recommend them. These weren't expensive. Uh, these ones will obviously just sort of hold up the trailer from rolling off, but in regards to uneven ground, it's definitely a thing you'll come across and you'll learn to consider wherever you go. Like we've used rocks and those types of things under the tire and they've all worked, but um, that's just what we carry. Security wise, this one's come up um, quite a few times actually. Now we use this one here, I think it's the, um, was it Saracen or Saracen? I'll chuck him up on the screen and you guys can work it out. We got this one from um, uh, it's a caravan and camping or RV or something. 
Yeah, Melbourne, got it, got it on line. This one's great. So we put this one on the, the DO35 hitch. So if we're going away anywhere, this one goes on there and gives us a bit of security in regards to being able to bolt it on and stop someone from um, hooking up the trailer. The camper trailer itself has locks in all the doors and we don't leave any valuables uh, in the camper whenever we go anywhere. Um, there is different parts of the company where, uh, sorry, there is different parts of the country where security is something you do need to be more mindful than others. So um, yeah, have a look at the options, but that's what we use and um, it's pretty heavy and does a job for us. Now, stuff on the inside, washing powder. But if you haven't thought of it now, I guarantee you're gonna come across a situation where you're gonna need a peg bag. Uh, I think we're in early beach in Queensland and well, you know, most caravan parks will have laundries and those types of things and you're gonna to need to do your washing um, somewhere. You're gonna need pegs. So definitely make sure you, you grab yourself a bag and don't rely on somewhere to have pegs because there's nothing worse than needing to hang things up and you got nothing, so do yourself a favour. This one here, although I, uh, I did have someone one day tell me that Bunnings don't sell 12 volt, 12 volt fans. Um, this one here is an Azito 12 volt fan, which we got from Bunnings about four years ago. So we've got, actually got two of these in the camper. Just runs off the SIG socket. Uh, I believe they, they still sell these or um, a similar type of one. This is like a, maybe under a hundred bucks for those. So when it's, when it's hot and um, you can hang these up and depending on what type of um, setup you've got, these fans are really good. They don't use a lot of power. But for us, yeah, these have been great and definitely get used in the northern parts of Australia, that's for sure. Radio lights. So these are all different variations of uh, strip lights effectively. So these are obviously just cheap Kings ones and we've had these for oh yeah, three years as long as we had this camp and they've been great. So there's just backup ones in there. But there's inside and outside ones. So basically with the MDC camera trailer, uh, you get a few of these and in those, what we do is put this bit of strip lighting through that one there and they just plug in with a with a SIG socket so we've actually got a couple of those that go inside the camper. Outside of the camper we use these ones. I had to modify these so I think they come with the white lights and I've just changed these out with um, with yellow ones. I've got white ones in the bag so depend, depending on where I am I can change them over but these ones here I can actually sort of cable tie to the Yanex poles or with a Velcro here, they just um, just stick right on there, and I just got the two of those, and we have one down the, the side there, and at the front, and one down the back there. And lights-wise, yeah, that does the job for us. Rightio, we're closing in the end here. So tables-wise, these are the king's ones. Uh, I'm not going to set this one up for you. I'll chuck a picture up on the screen. Again, didn't pay a lot for these. These different types of tables you can use, you know find something that suits um, you know your storage options and your capabilities with what you, you've got with your setup but for us um, two of those is what we use and this one here is the old King's clothesline we literally used this uh, only a couple of weekends ago I'm not going to get him out but I'll chuck up a picture again didn't cost us a lot this one here um, it's sort of a bit buggered on the base now, but you can get them where, and I would definitely think about this, get one that you can um, peg into the ground because it's likely you're gonna be somewhere and you're gonna need to hang up wet towels from a day of swimming or whatever, and it might be a bit windy and, um, you know, you really can't sort of put it somewhere that's out of the wind, so get something you can peg on the ground that can actually sort of handle it and stay there and um, that'll do the job, but that one there, again, just stays in there. Other than this bag, um, all that goes inside the camper is suitcases. I'll chuck a, a quick um, shot up now at the type of suitcases we use. We get those, um, well Nita got those from Anaconda, sorry, Ikea. 
Um, so I've each got one of those and they stack in there nice and neatly. But this is the only other thing that goes in the camper. So this is more the um, in case of situations, emergencies, those types of things. These are things I'd recommend you you're having. So I forgot to grab it. We do carry a, a fire extinguisher with a fire blanket as well. So um, you know, cooking, you know, you definitely want to have that, but there is some parts in Australia that require you, um, you know, sometimes you've got to have a tort, but you've also got to have a fire extinguisher, um, depending where you're going, uh, sorry, depending where you're going as well. Seeing this bag here, I think I talked about this in a video not too long ago. This one here is uh, walkie talkies. So these are the GME ones, they're only, um, one water so not super powerful but we got these in regards to backing in and backing the trailer um, to try and save an argument it is hard to hear out this side or that side and um, you know come back a little bit further or you come back too much and that sort of stuff uh, I forget I forget what these cost but um, in hindsight, you know, some kids walkie talkies might have been a, a reasonable option as well, but we wanted something that was going to last us. So, okay. other things we got in here first aid kit. Now, if you've got kids, um, you would likely already have one of these. Now, we have one in the camper trailer at all times, and we have one in the back of the Bajero as well. So, um, unfortunately, uh, Hurley's pretty clumsy and always needing one of those. So, I recommend you, you get one of those. Other thing is, and you've seen us use these before, um, actually quite recently. This one here is a, again, just the GP Kings one. We've had this for uh, four years. This is just a backup um, battery pack or starter pack. So if you have a flat battery in your car, this one will get you out of the shit. That's for sure. I just started packing up and realised you didn't cover one really important thing and probably one of the most important things you're going to need is a bloody deck chair so these deckies here this is the um the wanderer we got these from bcf and uh we've got the four of them so two for us um two for the kids but i'll chuck them up on a screen so you can see for yourself um there's lots of different chairs you can go for but think about what you can fit what you got room for um and what you need because uh, while it's pretty tempting to have some pretty luxurious and some pretty crazy things, it's likely going to be determined. You know, it's likely going to be determined by what you can actually fit. So for us, we got these ones here. We got these ones because they're actually really firm. I can sit back and I'm not sagging and getting lost in the bloody chair. Plus, we got these little side tables here. So for us, it's not so so much of a big deal. But if you got kids. They're going to need to put their drinks and teddies and bloody toys and whatever bits and pieces or when they're eating to put their food there and that sort of stuff. For us, these have been great. And again, I think we're about four years in on these ones and um, these little tables are starting to go, but the rest of it um, is still like we just bloody bought it. But anyway, now I've done that bit, let's go back to the future and um, let's finish off this. With regards to what accessories do you need for a camper trailer, that's up for you to work out. That's just all the stuff we carry and this is refi uh, refined after doing quite a few trips in different places. Now before we did a big trip, we did quite a few um, shorter trips to try and work out what we need, you know, what we might need when you're going on the road for months at a time or um, any sort of longer trip you the temptation is to just take so many things but there's a lot of things you don't need and this is what's left this is all the stuff we have and all the stuff we need so hopefully it's uh, helpful for you to work out what you need for your setup and i reckon that'll about do it so um jack again like i said before jump in the comments and let us know if you have any questions or want any clarity things or if not jump on our socials and um we can have a chat and a a messenger there and um, try and help you out with uh, whatever you got. But anyway, I reckon that'll about do it. Thanks for watching, everyone. Really appreciate your support. 
so far and um, I get some truly amazing messages and comments from you telling me about um, how we've inspired you to you know get out traveling and explore and do some things you know um, that's really cool and I, I re we really appreciate it. it's really nice to hear so thank you but anyway that's enough I'm Diesel for Get Around Oz, Care for Trailer Traveling. We'll see you next week. I root. Blah, 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 blah. For us. Um, is a bit of a backup, but yeah, for us. For us, sorry, uh, yeah, they sit up on the front of the, the camper trailer at all times when we're doing long, uh, when we're trap. Now, when we were. Did it, did it, did it, did it.